Welcome to the 14th and final Flutter Brigade Roundtable. I am your host, Fshy89, and joining me in my bedroom of sketch is co-host Mon, the only remaining member of the brigade left. We'll explain that momentarily. But on this episode of the Flutter Brigade Roundtable, we are going to discuss the movie we just saw. And that movie is called Rainbow Rocks 2. And if you haven't seen it, oh my god, you wait, absolutely wait, wait, wait. have to. You just said Rainbow Rocks 2. Whatever. Quest your girls to your Rainbow Rocks. Well, either way, man. The point is, this movie was freaking hilarious from start to end. And I can actually explain why it's probably going to revolutionize where the show's going. I can definitely see the Equestria Girls fandom taking over the Bronies a lot more. Especially with that hot and sexy Lara Bon Bon shipping. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Yep. Yep, that happened. For any of you guys out there who are actually, like, who have actually watched the uh, movie yet, they pushed the envelope. Oh, did they ever? They were nuzzling. Oh, yes. There was nuzzling. There were sexy stares into each other's eyes. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, if Lyra was Sir Elton John, oh boy. It's sketch. Cording. Just so much cording. She's a rocket man. Burning out her fears in my boner. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but seriously, though, this movie gets a 10 out of 10 by my standards, man. You have to see it. By my standards... Basically 9.9. Close 9. enough to a 10. Might as well be a 10. Yeah. Dude, it was good. Some I know, but I still saw some flaws in it, but not nearly enough to even give it a damp, a slight damper. All I know is I couldn't stop choking the whole way through because well, I was no, laughing duh. so much. Yeah, well, yeah. Pretty, it's, it was impossible not to laugh because, let's just put it this way, whereas the first Equestria Girls kind of played it safe with gags and it didn't take itself seriously. This one, like, ran on the gag machine. Oh, yes. From beginning to end, it's practically just non-stop laughter, which is hilarious. There's the no offense gag. It's like, Sunset Shimmer, we're sorry, but you destroyed our school. No offense. No <laughs> offense, darling. And you got Rarity in the damn dresses. The dress. The dress. Oh, yes. Just spoiler alert. The dress. We yeah. don't we don't know what it is, but don't forget the dress. Season it's, five. It's absolutely important. Hashtags. Hashtag season five. The dress. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. But yeah. Yes. Oh, and then there's Tri oh god, Trixie. Trixie. Yes, Trixie makes a return. <laughs> and her songs are the sketchiest ever. Well, she she's Trixie. She does her tricks. Yes, literally. She. Whoops, some trick though. Okay, no. Let's not go there. Um, <laughs> Overall though, the animation definitely a step up from the uh, first. Uh, yeah. One particular type of animation was concentrated on a uh, bit. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, the lower, uh, the lower crotch region. Mm, yes. That pelvic region. Yes. A dance of days. She kind of likes to sway her hips. <laughs> it is very sexy. All the more reason you must see this movie. But yes, the animation is definitely a step up, and mm -hmm. and and then some. Not right. on, not only that, but the music. Oh my God, the music! Some of the songs were just throwaways. It, it's throwaways, but I mean, they were that, that, the same thing happened with the Posture Girls, the first one. Like that, that's a given. Yeah, but even in the seasons before this, like in the actual show, it was that way too. Yes, I know they were throwaways, but even though they were throwaways, they still Aww. did it in a hilarious way. Yeah. Because they made them funny. And for some... The part that got me near the beginning was Pinky just... It's like, okay, normal instrument. Like, it's like, you can play the guitar, then sousaphone. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. It's like, here we go. And then she follows it up, finally, with a freaking theremin. That she pulled out of her ass. Because and she's just like, ooh, yes. magical. Also, the new form of text, message, text messaging has been invented. You write in a book, and then somebody else's book will vibrate, and then you have sent a text message. That's not even a joke. That literally is what they did. Yes. 
It was quite we're, funny. We're not even kidding. Yes. I was only kidding when I said primitive technology, but they literally went there. But you know what the best part of the whole experience was? With cream? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. You guys out there, tell me if this doesn't, this combination doesn't seem sketchy. Seven girls at a slumber party. This is already sounding good. Actually, eight of them include the mod. Yes. Um, <laughs> Incest! But then you... Okay, so you got eight girls. And then the entire refrigerator is filled just with quick cream. Yes. I know another type of cream that's getting... Yeah, no. yeah, I know another type of cream that is being produced right now. Ooh. Let's not go there, but yeah. either way. No, but you know what the best part about our whole experience was? Mm. They literally, and this isn't even a joke, they played the movie from a fucking Blu-ray. Yep. Like, you could see the pause buttons in the corner and everything when it started. He thought, it was, he, thought he was just joking when he said at the beginning, like, he tried to... Okay, we'll spill the beans. He tried to pirate it. <laughs> but... Adagio Dazzle caught onto his, uh, yes. his plan, and she's like, she just stared at the camera, and it's like, oh shit. <laughs> it caused my camera to force close, so unfortunately. They don't I, call her a siren for nothing. That beach. <laughs> I know, right? But yes, like, I, 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 I see now why my theater, because, like, my theater has eight screens, and unfortunately, they put it on the smallest screen possible. Which, which was still pretty freaking Which was big. still pretty big, yeah, but I now know why they did that. Simply because that's the only one that has the Blu-ray player hooked into the projector. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't make any sense because they can easily pull it out and put it in any of the others. Or buy more Blu-ray. <laughs> that too. <coughs> but then, like, shockingly enough, it was a very low turnout, too. But then again, that's probably because we went to the very first, like, showing. Like, the theater had only been open for, like, five minutes by the time we got there. Also, Derpy's band. Yes, Derpy's Derpy band. Derpy has a band. And apparently she plays the saw with a violin bow. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, you guys can figure that one out. I, like, I know I'm smart, but... <laughs> also... In other news, even though probably it's not news anymore because the screenshots were leaked quite a while ago, Trixie is officially a cock blocker. She <gasps> is. Oh my god. Which also means... <sighs> get the hazmat seats ready <laughs> and get into the bunker. Yeah. Flashlight is not quite official, but it's getting there. Oh yes. It's getting there. It's damn close. Also, for everyone who's like just tuned in now, you're probably wondering, where the hell is the third member? So where's that, well, not so tall guy, but <coughs> sketchy guy that has the two crushes. <coughs> yeah. The well, awesome. Yeah. yeah. He kind of like went crazy and decided to up and leave the group. That's like the understatement of the year, and it's a really long story that we're not going to go into full details about. But yes, after this video... This will be officially the last Flutter Brigade thing ever done. Which is... Which sucks, but... I don't know. Maybe I might revive the podcast. I don't know if it will be with Flutters here, but... We'll see. Yes. But it'll be years down the road if the show is still going. Yes. Or months, I don't know. Speaking of the show... How do you think that season five is gonna be now that we saw this? I still don't have high hopes for it. I really don't. Here's the scene. Yeah. Um, I actually really am interested to see it now because basically this movie, and I told you this on the way back. Yeah. They intertwine the two canons of the entire, uh, you know, of the movie, which isn't really gonna just be a movie at this point for much longer. Yes. And the show. The show former, the show proper. Those two canons are not different. They are not inseparable. They yes. are indivisible. Yes. Never change just not. Yes. <laughs> but no, seriously, they are actually going to merge the, they have merged the canons of the two. Because essentially we're we're left with a cliffhanger at the end. Yes. 
There's Twilight, but it's not the Twilight we know. And no, love. it's not. Mm. Well, probably it still is, but it's it's her and her human. Yeah. Well, it's her human counterpart. Yes. And she apparently doesn't even live in the same area. She's somewhere outside of town, from the looks of it. Cause she's my head cannon. Um, I know head cannon doesn't mean shit, but my conjecture on this is that the two timelines of the two worlds basically follow the same path. She must have gone to a special academy. She's not in Canelot High. Which doesn't make sense. Because if no, Twilight, because Twilight started at Canterlot, and Princess but, Celestia is at Canterlot. But, if you think about it, where the whole... the Canterlot High isn't Canterlot. True. In, in the Equestria Girl universe, because where does everything take place in the, the show proper? Ponyville. Yeah, that's true. This is very true. Either way, I still... The more you know. <laughs> the more you know. Yeah, but... The more sketchy you become. Yes. No, but... <coughs> the thing is that... The thing that surprised me most about this movie was... They pushed more berries than I thought they would. Yes. Because yeah. one... Okay, one... Um... None of those teasers were actually... Well... Okay, it's hard... It's kind of deceptive to say that none of them were in the movie. But they weren't really in the movie. Like, well, vinyl came in with the music to my ears sort of thing. Yes, but. yes. But you know what? It's already been, like, explained. Everything that those shorts were was just, like... Hype. Hype, and it was the book that they released under the same title. Right. Just animated. Plus, it's also getting people hyped for the series, the spin-off series. Which is going to come in a year or two. Yes. I can't wait for the spin-off series. I really can't. I think it, it'll do good. I think it will too. I mean, this definitely is a boon for DHX and Hasbro, because, I mean, as much as Hasbro has misdirected the uh, show in the past to a point, they're definitely making up for it, because I think they're letting DHX take the reins a little bit more. Yeah, clearly. Because even though this movie is allegedly intended for children, there's like so much stuff in there that I is mean, not for children in the slightest. Just consider this. It's really hard to deny that the entire, that part with the Battle of the Bands with the whole tournament thing and sort of like the montage, when Lyra and Bon Bon are show, like it's not, you can't really say that that's not, there's not a romantic undertone there. No. That you can't, because, like, they literally do nuzzle. Like, I'm not even joking. They literally look at each other in the eyes with love in their eyes. It's only for a few frames, but it happened. I saw I mean, it happen. it could be a throwaway, just a nod to the fans, but let's put it this way. Do you think Hasbro would, Hasbro or DHX, for that matter, would have done this years ago? No. Nope. They wouldn't. They would never. You can definitely it. tell just because of the way even the show itself is going. Season four was nothing more than Brony pandering at its highest. I wouldn't say. <laughs> I did say Brony pandering earlier, but I wouldn't say it was so much pandering as we got more attention. Yeah. Like, we thought season three was like pandering, but like it was nothing. Well, even in season two, four. like season two, like we thought it was awesome just to have the odd shout out here and there. They named Derpy officially, and then that, that caused a shitstorm, but. I mean, the only thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is that, and actually I shouldn't really be concerned about it, I think this actually might be a good thing, because this was such a good movie, and it made the Equestria Gold franchise strong. Strong. What it's probably going to do is kind of bittersweet. It'll probably weed out the fandom. We're going to have a purge soon. Yeah. The because, I, let's put it this way. Um... Either that, or we're gonna split right down the middle. Probably. I mean, the fandom, like, considering it's been, um, the, it's been teetering. Considering the very first Equestria Girls that split the fandom. Yeah, we're fracturing. <laughs> yeah. Even more, obviously. But the thing I'm seeing is that <coughs> there's always been a contingent of at least reasonable fans, and if not, if they're not the majority, at least the minority isn't completely silent. Yes. Which is good. The thing that, I mean, it, what I'm anticipating is that this was so good that I think 
there's not, like, for those reasonable fans, and even for some that are sort of on the fence, this will redeem the Equestria Coast franchise. It will. Yes. But I think what's going to happen, and I think anyone, for anyone who's ever, you know, who has in the last week or two read my, um, uh, my recent BrunCon retrospective for, uh, the, for this year's BrunCon, <sighs> the fan base... For that con specifically, I hate to say it, guys, but BronyCon's going down. Well, yeah. Not in a kind of way you would think, like, oh my God, they're going down. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta whack it. No. Um. Despite all the high hopes we had for Josh Dean, he did his best, but you can't save something that's on the that's ready to go. Well, like I said about pony cons in general, it's not I, pony cons aren't dying. I no, don't. I mean like they will eventually. I mean they're all yeah. starting to become the same old thing. I mean, how many times can you book the yeah, same old Yeah, but VAs? here's but I, we're not at that point. Yeah, here's what I'm thinking. What's probably going to end up happening is that the East Coast um, con scene was the one that kind of started it off. What's happening now is the East <coughs> Coast con scene, which really centered on the Baroni it's crumbling. Yeah. It's not, and Bro I'm if anything, Baronicon itself is crumbling. Maybe not the entire scene, because we still have cons that are all over the East Coast, but they're small. They're small. mostly small. I What's prefer the smaller ones actually. Yeah, it's better. You get like a much better taste of the actual like quality side of the fan. Yeah. Because here's the thing. What I've been seeing in the last year and since my sort of like disappearance, sorry guys, I didn't die. <laughs> um, I just had work and everything, but anyway. Um, uh, what basically happened was that the con scene, in essence, has sort of evolved at the very least. It's gone mostly to the west coast and to the middle of the, um, nor you know, the North American continent, both in Canada and in the, and in the US. Brony Canada was a success. Babs Con is probably going to be the next big thing. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, which is a, which is a good thing for the West Coast team because they had a bad name set for them because, because of Unicon. Unicon, um, Equestria LA. Actually, Equestria LA is coming back, which is surprising. Yeah. Um. Not, yeah, but Unicon sort of spoiled it. Yeah. But, Unicon sort of spoiled all cons for a while. But Unicon's way in the past. <laughs> if anything, Broncon this year. If I wonder if I can go on about that for a bit. Basically, BronyCon this year wasn't a failure, but it isn't what it was before. Like, I hate to break to anyone who's out there who's watching this and loves BronyCon. I wouldn't know, I've never been to one. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, they anticipated that they were going to get 10,000 fa- or 10,000, um, attendees, at the very least. They were short by about 800. They only got about nine, uh, 9,200, I think. It was either that or 9,900, which was like really close, but they expected 10,000 at the very least. That was a conservative estimate, and they didn't even reach that. And on top of that, there were a lot of uh, behind the scenes things that I actually witnessed. One, the con staff at that con has gone a little bit too far, even with the change of administration. We all have Black Griffin, of course. Yes. They screwed him over, and his brother, too. His brother just got out of uh, the Naval Academy. They were trying to sell their CDs, um, you know, outside of the uh, the concert, um, you know, Brian Cruz on the first night. They had to move. They couldn't... The, I don't know why... The, I don't know if that's, like, an actual policy of the convention center, or if the con staff just wanted to sort of not you know, have like an equality policy or, I, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. I but there, it me. seemed a little off, because they just sort of brushed them away. And if you think about it, I know this is going to sound like apologies for new celebrities, but there are good people in the fandom like Black Griffin, you know, Gabriel Brown and his brother, and Ben, like, they are good people. Like, they collaborate with the Preavers. Like, they're not people like... I hate to say this, and this is probably going to get me a lot of hate, but they're not like Mike, who just loves his ego. Mike the Mike, who loves his ego. <laughs> Mike the micro-penis. 
Um, and like other people, like uh, fuck, I can't even remember anybody else. Like, well, actually, I learned about this in the uh, our actual artists in the visual arts scene. Drop Noise is apparently a big douchebag. <laughs> Um, because he he actually like not he didn't snub Grenader but Grenader is you know yeah. not happy with him but either way I guess long story short is this <laughs> the con scene at least as far as Brony Con goes is just it's not the same no it's not it's not even close well obviously and I mean, there were problems that I had that spoiled my experience in other areas, but <coughs> that's something I won't go into yet. But yeah, it's it, it was just oh, underwhelming because like, <laughs> I mean the the best thing was the music. Like that's pretty sad. The, even the VA stuff wasn't that good. They had Tabitha, and I was expecting, oh my god, I'm gonna love this, but. I didn't even go to any of the VA panels because like none of them were really good. And this is actually something that really pissed me off. I'm sorry for my Um, but like the attendees of BronyCon are really kind of snobbish. They they gotten snobbish because like I will tell you this much. I know from recordings that I did, ironically enough. Um people were interrupting these panels left and right. Like there was a train whistle during uh, Apple's to app, uh, Buy Some Apples to Apples, which in which they, all the VAs were playing, uh, <coughs> the VAs and the uh, producers were playing uh, Apple's to Apples, and they were trying to have fun. And this guy's blowing a fucking train whistle, and even, I mean, Peter knew I handled it, handled it pretty profes professionally, and he said, like, oh, what is, where, is this a uh, Thomas the Tank Engine convention? I mean, Gay! I know, right? But, like, the fact that they have to do that is sad. I know it's going to happen, but this actually extended to another con that isn't even here on this continent. Buck Con, Buck, over in Manchester, some dumbass, some idiot, was going on about freaking Twilight Time to Dave Polsky, and he wrote that episode, and that oh was Oh god, I saw episode. the video. Yeah, no, this kid just went on a rant, and Dave Polsky handled, handled it like a champ. But is that really where we are as fans? Like, we're bickering about our headcanon and our ex expectations not being met? Listen, I'm, I'm a writer, and I know what the side that these writers are facing. Like, you... I'm gonna get... Piss off a lot of people, but you guys gotta stop being so freaking like childish. demanding and de yeah, childish and demanding. The writers will do what they're going to do. You can't change it, and if you don't like it, to get bad. out. I, I'm not. I'm just gonna say it outright. Get out. You're being childish, and we don't need you. Yeah, it's people like people that are out there doing it that gives us all the bad name and makes us all look bad. I mean, no, I doubt any of <laughs> anyone who's actually doing this would actually. Fit into that group, but I'm yeah. But way. I'm just saying, like, to whoever who, who I mean, I don't know who these people are personally. I mean, they might not actually be whatever. But when you actually go and do something like that in public, you not only oh, set a bad example for yourself, and I guess, but the rest of us, right? As and well. I guess the I guess with the to end off the whole con rage thing, let's put it this way. <laughs> I I'm very very like I get this like distinct sense right now of like this like Sean for you know like happiness that in other people's misery like basically these two idiots behind me at one of the panels um that i went to riffing his magic and like uh, a bunch of people you know a bunch of the uh celebrities in the community like uh you know ac Ra ac race best saber spark black griffin uh, beavids paleo and uh, tommy oliver um uh, yeah <laughs> Well, basically, they went up on stage and they did what was last year Mystery Pony Theater uh, 3000. So basically, they did riff tracks of yeah, the, the older generations. But like the thing is, before <coughs> it even started, I had these two jackheads, these two dumbasses behind me, arguing, "Oh, the the Pushier Girls Rainbow Rose is gonna suck. How like how the hell are they gonna bring back Twilight?" <laughs> Little did they know, like. If they actually read Equestria Daily and don't just go there to get, but um, <laughs> like if they actually read like anything that you know Seth and Calpain put up, they've explained that 
in a synopsis of the movie, they explain how Twilight comes back, and that's the major gripe that they have. Yeah, she builds the Stargate. That's all there is to it. Like, it's like, yeah, well, what did you expect? Like, it's going to happen if they have to build up the series. I know it's hey. not It's not super artistic and it's not true. Hey. It's, a, it's, a, it's always been a business. Coming from a guy who just, like, literally saw the damn movie, like, 20 minutes ago. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, we're literally filming this after getting back from the theater. But, come, been longer, minutes, but, but like, coming from a guy who literally just saw it, I totally bought the way she reopened the magic mirror. I mean, it's not overly... In fact, I call it, like, an it's not over, to Stargate. It's not overly contrived. I think some of the dialogue makes it seem so, and that's why I kind of took a, a little fraction of the point off. They still are a little bit mechanical in their dialogue, and, like, they have to point out their plot devices. Yeah. Well... Not that type of plot device. Uh, plot devices. No, but yeah, no. <laughs> like they pointed out a lot of the plot devices. It's like, oh, this was here all along because of this. It's like, no, we know, we know. Yeah. But I understand why. But because it's for kids. By basically. doing so too, like it really didn't take away from it. For it me. I thought it was hilarious it because, because it was more funny having them it, point out the obvious. It is diplomatic because they have to still make it seem like a children's show, but I, they, I, they recognize that there is the older demographic and they've accepted oh yeah. it. I can basically, I, I can basically already know of at least three complaints that some people are gonna have that see this Flash movie. Lights. First of all, Flash Sentry. Get over it. That's he all I gotta in say. season four, and I had to argue with two jackasses on freaking Twitter. I didn't have to, but I did. <laughs> um, and Big Jim, or ironically, Jim Bing, the banging out, banging out, yeah. <laughs> um, Big Jim Miller, basically Jim Miller from the production staff, um, the storyboard produ producer, um, he he explained, like, he, or he actually scolded me, he's like, hey, don't be so mean, you know, you know, they have their a right to their opinions, and I'm like, uh, right. he, he scolded me, and like, I get why he did, like, I get it, there's always gonna be that part of the fandom, but it still pisses me off, like, yeah, god damn it, like, Twilight is n like I'm gonna clue you guys in. These ponies are actually your white folks. Oh my god! Oh my god. It's the end of the world, man! No, I'm just kidding. As I get more flesh. Um. <laughs> yeah. No, but seriously, like. I'll yeah. Get, I'll hold back on making a. I mean, References to some certain someone who will not name. I just gave you. Yes. Um. <laughs> they're not. None of these fictional characters are ever gonna be with you if you can't form an actual I know, relationship. <laughs> Funny thing, I should be fucking complaining because Luna is just like enamored with the Dodgio and like all the. the oh yeah, the That's 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 um, a, that's God, another that's we, another spoiler. We learned a lot. We learned a lot about Luna and, and maybe Celestia. her sexuality. Well, no, Celestia too. They, it's like yeah, for princesses they're pretty freaking weak in the human <laughs> world at least. It's like yeah, it's like they're they get confronted by these obvious sirens and then what do they do? Oh guy, we signed your paper. <laughs> we signed a paper. Exactly. But, and it, but anyway, he's trying to get myself back on top of here. So yeah, the first complaint obviously is going to be flash entry. But yeah, get over it. The second complaint I can see people having, the siren songs. I can see them complaining because they're literally singing their evil plan. That's actually brilliant, though, if you think about it. Yeah. Because, guys... The like, way they pulled it off guys, it like coming, genius. Yeah. See, coming from a writer, the way they did that is actually incredibly clever. Because what they're basically doing is, like, they're doing... They're committing the cardinal sin of writing. You do not tell what you're doing and what you're planning and what you're thinking. They're, like, that's exposing the interiority of the characters. But it makes sense here, because they're evil, and they're sirens, and no matter what they're singing, people are going to listen. Well... That's enough, that, and that's a new dynamic we ha we've never seen before, that, that, you know, entire groups of people can just be enamored by, well, you know, basically, well, sexuality, if you want to go there, yeah. and... <laughs> 
and you know the beauty of song like that like literally that's incredibly clever and that's coming from a guy who's going to school for writing yeah there was, there was a third thing but I can't remember what the hell I was gonna say now so it could have been that but uh, I do know one thing that like is gonna be at least one person I know of is gonna be extremely happy about and yes this is another spoiler so if you don't like spoilers this is oh, the time, I to, turn, time to turn to yeah You know a certain pony that plays the cello slash double bass? She has a voice actress now. Oh, no, that Octavia was... got a voice. Octavia got a voice. And I'm I still waiting on vinyl, but hey. One uh, step at a time. Yeah, one step at a time. Although that's a more divisive issue because there's a reason behind that. Yeah. Yeah, basically they can't do anything yet because the fandom would have a freaking hissy fit if no acting wasn't. Yes. Yes. So overall, though, would you say it was definitely worth making the trip up to Canada to see this movie in theaters? I always come to Canada when I get the least excuse. <laughs> That's for other reasons. But no, yeah, I, I think it was definitely worth the trip, and considering all the health problems I've been having um, <laughs> lately, it's, it's a nice little vacation, and actually it gives me a lot of hope for what's coming in uh, 2015. Would you ever see this movie in theaters again? I could, yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have screen versions down in Buffalo. Byron Brown, please get on that. <laughs> Although he's probably not watching, and if he is, oh, fuck. <laughs> that would just be sketch. Isn't that like some kind of politician? What the hell would he He's the do? mayor of Buffalo. Well, he stinks. <laughs> that's another thing that's great about the movie. They all stink. Their, their stench lines are just like whatever. I mean, we thought... <laughs> inside joke here. We yeah. thought he did it. He, we thought he detonated a nuclear bomb, or at least his friend did, yeah. uh, at uh, a place called uh, here in the city called uh, The Beat Goes On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But th these stenches, oh my god. They're stenches. And the sirens love them though, they just suck them up like... It's just pendants though, they don't actually breathe them in. Well either way, they're still sucking them. Yeah, they suck. <laughs> they did suck at the end when their pendants were... Yes. And th they were just as bad as Twilight. Oh you god, know. Twilight. My ears, my ears will never be the same because of that. It was it, hilarious It's though. hilarious, but oh my god. Oh yeah, you know what else is hilarious? A chocolate chip can now become a way to get someone's attention. I'd like to thank Pinkie Pie for this. I mean, we were so excited because we thought they were going to be texting their ass marks to each other. I know, no texting of the asses. I guess no. that's why they got the book. It's got a plot though. Oh, we like plots. We're being too, way too silly right now. <laughs> you think? It doesn't help that we did both, well you got it. Sleep I didn't. <laughs> Overall though, like yeah, I definitely, 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 definitely recommend you go see this movie. Yep. Without a doubt. There's just no way that you should miss it. Unless it's not playing in your area. And then in which case, pirate it. When you can't. Well actually don't pirate. Pirate's bad. Pirate's bad, says, bro. Pirating's bad, okay, says the fucking guy who was trying to pirate it with him a cell phone. No, I wasn't actually trying to do that. You were. <laughs> you didn't lie. Okay, fine. I was trying to buy it. Yeah, but seriously though, it's worth it's buying when the time comes. Yeah, it is. It is. I bought the first one. I probably the first one. But I will buy the second one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's worth it, and I think it'll be worth it for any fans who were losing hope and were just like, I need something in the heights. Give me a reason to hope. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. But anyway, yeah. No, but seriously, it's a brush of breath, uh, a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Those are the also, on another side note, uh, movie theaters are a great place if you want to sing opera. They are. <laughs> Because he was trying to sing friggin' Pag uh, Pagliaccio. I and, was uh, singing Pagliaccio. You were. <laughs> but for no reason, like, at all, I just got bored and started singing. Pavarotti's just spinning in his grave right now. 
I saying, oh game. dear god, why is this guy from Brantford doing this? Why you do you do this to me, Charles? Why you do these things? Really? Ah. <laughs> oh god, I think we have to conclude this video. Because it's just getting... But, but it's the last video. I know, but... There's not much we can do. We're just two guys in front of a camera. Sketch. Behind us is like... It's very sketch. Very sketch. All the pony. All the pony. Yeah, so we didn't die, guys. We just... We've just... Life yeah. happened and, well, for two of us at least. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't want things to end this way, but there's out of my control. Even being the leader of the whole thing, I still can't control every little thing that goes on around here. I just ain't got that time. Yeah, so, unfortunately, this is it. This is it. Once this concludes, the end of the road. And we did this because we didn't want to end it on an unlucky number. I mean, um, yeah, no. But really, it's a nice way to end it because we did talk about this when we did our first episode. Yes. And for him, and for us to actually get to see it together in person is a rare thing in itself. Because it's not very often we actually get together. Which sounds totally wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no. <coughs> yeah, I mean, like, I got to see this biker bitch over here during Con Bravo, but... I guess it was a boom that, you know, a good thing that, um... I don't have a screen vision in my area because... I wouldn't have seen it with this, this weirdo over here. <laughs> I'm definitely right. weird. Besides, though, there's always an excuse to come to Canada. It's just better than the States anyway. That's right. You suck, Americans! <laughs> in before I listen, it's banned in America. Probably will. Me. Nah. I don't actually think Americans suck, per se. I just think your policies and your politics are fucking horrendous. But that's another topic for another video. Misdirected, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yes. Anyways, thanks for watching us in our insanity. And this will be the last time that we ever do anything together as the Flutter Brigade. I mean, we're not even the Flutter Brigade at this point. Yeah, we're just. whatever. We just kind of wanted to use the name for this. So I recognize me. But yeah, like, there's nothing saying there won't be future team ups or something between us. But as for me. I'm pretty much taking my channel solo for now. So And I gotta deal with other things. Yes. Fandom is taking the second seat for me. Yes. It's on the back burner. Yes, yes. In any case, thanks for watching and I will see you in the future at some point. I'll be there. He'll be there too, maybe. Potentially. Just look it's kind of squint for that short guy in the background. Yes. I'll be there. Peace out, y'all.